Grand Blue Fantasy Relink is an action role-playing game developed by Psy Games and has captured a lot of attention recently due to its visual stunning presentations and immersive gameplay experience. With rich and engaging replayability that can be tackled independently or with friends, it's shaping up to be one of the biggest RPG titles of the year. And even though a series of mishappenings troubled the game's development in the past, fans of the franchise and new players alike have waited eagerly for its release. In this video, we'll be diving into the core of Grand Blue Fantasy Relink and seeing what it has to offer, especially its main focus towards endgame activities and a fresh multiplayer experience. And ultimately, determine if Grand Blue Fantasy Relink is for you. The story of Grand Blue Fantasy Relink takes place in the realm of Zega Grande Skyda, a world of islands of all shapes and sizes floating in a sea of clouds created and forsaken by its original inhabitants known as the Gods. The majestic realm was once invaded by higher beings called the Astrals, and its citizens known as the Sky Dwellers repelled the said invaders in an all-out war, leaving Zega Grande to live in peace and harmony. In these peaceful times, the player will play the role of Gran or Jita, and depending on which character the player has chosen, they will assume the role of the captain, the main protagonist of the story. This useful individual dreams of exploring and uncovering the mysteries of the vast blue. The game begins as you discover a letter left behind by your father instructing you to embark on a journey to a legendary island called Estelusia. However, before you depart, you encounter a mysterious girl named Lyria. This meeting develops the course of your destiny. Together with your best pal Vern, three of you set out on an exciting journey. Upon starting the main campaign, you'll be introduced to the captain's well-bonded crew, which supports their captain's goals wholeheartedly. As with any JRPG, the game story begins at a slower pace, but gradually involves the player in major and ever-growing events as they encounter more characters along the way. The pacing of Grand Blue Fantasy Relink's story is well laid out, with brief respites in between, and the game follows an intact and solid straightforward narrative that I find enjoyable from time to time. From start to finish, events were impactful and meaningful thanks to the narrative's easy-to-love supporting characters who all had their personalities and backgrounds. However, the length of the story may not provide a truly fulfilling experience for those looking for a more in-depth story or writing. Grand Blue Fantasy Relink's story is somewhat predictable, and players who are looking for a lengthier storyline or who just want to play for the story will probably be disappointed. The first major part of the story only lasts for around 10 hours, and this is where players will be enjoying an intact experience. After the said 10 hours, the story will be continued in post-game, and players will be enjoying another 10 hours of gameplay related to the main story. However, these are just a series of quests until the game truly ends. The additional 10 hours in post-game were unnecessary in my opinion and served more as padding than anything to extend the game's story hours. Grand Blue Fantasy Relink's main focus is its end-game content and replayability, thus this is not surprising. Grand Blue Fantasy Relink provided a straightforward experience in terms of gameplay loop and exploration. Players will follow a linear path in the majority of the main campaign with little to no exploration. Grand Blue Fantasy Relink is divided into chapters, and the typical gameplay is that you'll be following in-game markers to know where to go, while finding hidden treasure chests or loot on the side. This formula will be a staple until the end, so expect little variations here. Players will be encountering only two safe havens in the entire game while having the chance to explore 8-9 to nine dungeon-like levels, which explains the main story's 10-hour gameplay. This could be a double-edged sword for most players. If you know what you're getting into, this type of gameplay is expected, however those who are looking for a much deeper and wider exploration possibly find this mundane or lacking depth most of the time. On the other hand, there will be side quests from NPCs and towns or jobs from the quest counters if the player wants to blow off steam and not progress in the main story. Moving on to character progression and customization, and it is one of the most interesting aspects of the game. Although nothing is really original or unique here, Psy Games did a great job in terms of overall character progression. Players will be given the freedom to play and customize with six characters in the early game. In Grand Blue Fantasy Relink, these characters will help the captain progress in the main campaign, and they will be appearing in major dialogues or cutscenes. On the other hand, other staple and popular Grand Blue Fantasy characters are optional characters that will not appear in the main story, but can be recruited from Ciro's knickknack shop in exchange for crewmate cards, which can be obtained when progressing in the main campaign or from quest counter rewards. It's clear that each character has their own playstyle and unique skills that players can master. Finding the best character that will match your preferences and playstyle is indeed a joy and most of the time engaging in all aspects, especially when forming a team that can tackle hard fights during the end game. At the time of this review, players can fully utilize a total of 19 playable characters, 20 if you count Jita as another character, and more will be added over time. Each character will have their progression especially when it comes to masteries. As you progress in the main story or while doing side quests, your characters grow stronger by gaining experience from enemy encounters and by leveling up just like any JRPG. Leveling up characters will provide them with more stats and mastery points, or what we call MSP, to progress their masteries. 
Masteries are like your skill tree in most RPG games where you unlock nodes to have access to more stats, sigil slots, and even skills with the use of mastery points. And then there are sigils as well. These are like accessories that provide different stat bonuses through traits, which can drastically affect your character's efficacy and even define their build. There is a vast array of sigils in the game that players can collect and experiment with, and each of them is unique and governs a certain stat. Treat sigils like you would decorations in the Monster Hunter series. Weapons, on the other hand, are different avenues to play with. With six different and unique weapons available for each character which possess different stats and traits, players will be spending some time finding the best weapons that will suit their playstyles. Overall, I find Grand Blue Fantasy Reeling's progression and customization engaging. Yes, it does take time to max a character, especially when having limited resources in the early game, but the sheer possibilities and combinations that you can get out of this are just massive, and it's a huge plus in my book. Having an engaging progression is just to start, but Grand Blue Fantasy Relink has excellent combat mechanics as well. It's clear that Games put a lot of effort into making combat as fun and immersive as possible. As an action role-playing title, fights are in real time. Players will be forced to make split-second decisions to overcome their adversaries in combat. Everything in combat is fast-paced. Managing skill cooldowns, timely strikes, and dodging enemy attacks provided an engaging and thrilling experience. Unique attacks and skill animations were so fun to watch and satisfying to use. You can feel normal attack impacts, see smooth skill animation executions, and much more. And as I mentioned previously, players will be given the chance to play with different sets of skills per character, each of them having unique animations. However, Skybound Arts made the battle even more satisfying to watch, especially if I managed to pull off a high damage dealing combo and finish the enemy with a full burst attack. Most of the time in Grand Blue Fantasy Relink, you'll be dealing with hordes of enemies and bosses in the field, thus it will be chaotic, especially when an individual is adjusting to the demanding gameplay. But as one progresses in Grand Blue Fantasy Relink, players will become accustomed to the game's overall combat design and will improve. And luckily, any individual who is new to the genre will have access to a story difficulty when starting the game. This is a beginner-friendly difficulty where an assist mode is available. When playing in assist mode, attack combinations are done automatically in combat. Another mode is the full assist mode where players are only required to move the stick and everything will be done automatically. I don't recommend this to the general player as it detracts from the overall experience, but there could be a need for a very small number of players who find it physically difficult to use a controller. As an action role-playing enthusiast, I am particular about how timings are implemented or how the mechanics are designed for combat, and I can say that side games really paid attention to detail here, and enemy attack animations, especially bosses in general, were designed with great skill and passion. As expected, the bosses in Grand Blue Fantasy Relink are the meat of the game, and in most cases, the height of the experience. Each major boss in the main campaign is extremely distinct and has special attacks to execute in combat. These special attacks are mostly done cinematically and often lead to engaging combat mechanics where players need to learn how to avoid them. In our recent videos, we mentioned that it is somehow inspired by Final Fantasy XIV in terms of fight mechanics, and it turns out we were correct. In terms of performance, we played on a PC, a Ryzen 9 7950X with a GPU 3060 and 64GB of RAM to take advantage of higher frame rates. If you do have a system that can handle the game, we suggest playing it on PC since it provides a much smoother and more satisfying performance at above 60fps compared to PlayStation. Through the main campaign, we experienced solid performance without any crashes or game-breaking bugs that possibly halted our progress. A steady frame rate of around 120fps the whole time, without any major dips on the standard setting of the game. Aside from having quality gameplay and progression, Grand Blue Fantasy Relink excels with excellent character models and level designs. I lost track of how many times I just stood in one spot just to admire the world around me, with vibrant colors breathing life into the world. One can see the level of dedication and passion that was put into the game's 3D models. Paired with Cygame's excellent character illustrations and clean UI, Grand Blue Fantasy Relink is simply a game that perfectly encaptures the JRPG experience. And when it comes to audio, the game's overall musical scores were enough for me to be nostalgic about how old JRPGs were presented in the past. As expected, bosses have the best scores in the game, which elevated the experience even further. However, what I really want to focus on is the game's overall sound design, especially in combat and exploration. Hack hits, explosions, and skill executions felt great, thanks to these intricately designed sound effects. On top of that, I cannot stress how exceptional the Japanese voice acting is in Grand Blue Fantasy Relink. With a combined buttery smooth gameplay execution, sound design, and Japanese voiceovers, who could ask for more? In recent JRPGs, we observed phenomenal English voice acting, and we expected that it would be the case in Grand Blue Fantasy Relink. 
However, the English voiceovers in general feel lacking in most of the cases, and we gave it a chance, but eventually switched back to Japanese. Now let's move on to replayability. Judging from the level of content we've played so far, replayability is a huge part of Grand Blue Fantasy Relink. After the main story campaign, which is around 10 hours or so, the game truly begins. Various new features will start to be unlocked one by one, such as weapon selections at the blacksmith, higher difficulty quests, mastery expansion, and more. You'll be assigned to complete more demanding quests to further unlock more features, similarly to how progression works in the Monster Hunter series. Of course, the more difficult the quest is, the better the rewards. You'll find yourself constantly upgrading your party to keep up with the ever-growing challenges that Grand Blue Fantasy Relay presents. Grinding plays a big part in Endgame, and usually players will be farming for materials for weapon upgrades, more experience and mastery points, and more sigils to equip, and more. The Endgame of Grand Blue Fantasy Relink I find is addicting and engaging. I eagerly kept checking all the things I could take advantage of after just a short time playing it. I found myself asking the same questions on repeat after completing a series of quests. Questions like, what upgrades can I do now? How can I get stronger gear? And so on, which overall provided a healthy endgame loop. As a reminder, players can fully utilize a total of 19 playable characters with different skill loadouts and possible builds in the base game. Replayability is surely not a concern for most players if grinding is up their alley. Although we expected repeat bosses to be a thing at endgame like in most hunting games, I can't help but be a little disappointed by some of the larger bosses that had their assets reused and somehow painted differently with different colors or different skins. I'm probably being nitpicky with this point considering the genre, but I do feel that some players find this to be an issue as well. While online multiplayer, on the other hand, plays a pivotal role in terms of replayability. If multiplayer is your focus or you'll play with friends, you're in luck. More than 100 hours worth of gameplay is not a stretch, and it could be even more, thanks to the game's engaging character progression. Moving to the price point, the game's digital edition price tag is $59.99 USD for both Steam and PlayStation on Cygames' site. With the game's volume of content and overall production value, I can confidently recommend it at its current price point, especially if you're a fan of hunting games or you enjoy this kind of gameplay loop. While players will be playing for the narrative alone, which you really shouldn't be, are recommended to wait for a sale. 10 to 20 hours of gameplay is relatively short in my opinion, as it is not the focus of this game. Final thoughts. Grand Blue Fantasy Relink is overwhelmingly filled with positives in our book. However, we also understand the game is not for everyone, especially how relatively short the main story campaign lasted. It may not satisfy players seeking a more robust narrative experience. Fans of hunting games will find their money's worth here, in particular players who love to engage in online multiplayer sessions. Psy Games did a splendid job of laying out the overall character progression, especially to end game. I cannot wait for more possible DLC soon, but for now, I'll keep enjoying the game with my friends. Grand Blue Fantasy Relink is an action-packed RPG with stunning graphics, engaging combat, and high replay value. Fans of the Grand Blue Fantasy franchise and players seeking a visually impressive gaming experience will undoubtedly enjoy this game. Although there are a few areas that could improve, the overall experience is incredible, and it's worth playing, especially online with friends.